Hey, and what's up everybody? Christopher Harris here from filmandgamecomposers.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you Mod Wheels Biscuit Tin Guitar. Now this is an acoustic and electric biscuit tin guitar that includes fingered and plucked articulations as well as some effects, kits, and rhythms which are also BPM'd. And there's also some song patterns in there as well for uh, good measure. This was recorded at 24 bit at 96 kilohertz. It was multi-sample and there's close to uh, 2900 samples. The overall library is 1.4 gigabytes, which is compressed down to 657 megabytes via the lossless compression. You will need the full version of Contact 5.3 or higher to use this. It's currently on sale at their website, www.modwheel.co.nz, for approximately $49 USD. So, one thing about this instrument uh, to keep in mind here is you... Uh, Look at this interface. These are actual shots of the uh, the real instrument, and it's pretty cool because they designed this themselves. It's kind of like a one shot uh, kind of instrument that Steve Roche designed, and he's been making these for quite a while uh, to use in his own soundtracks as well as other work that he's done. So let's just uh, dive right in, shall we? Okay. So as you can see here, uh, the main library consists of. 35 instruments and these vary from just the basic core instrument to a bunch of effects driven um, manipulated uh, instruments that you know give you I guess the inspiration you need to get started so they're I consider them presets they're basically the regular instrument but then they've adjusted some of the settings to give you that immediate sound ready at your disposal so uh, taking a look here let's get a little bit uh, closer and uh, let's sorry let me adjust this real quick and uh, we'll get this zoomed in there we go okay sorry about that here we go so this has uh, everything you need here on the front panel you have your reverb setting as well as you can turn a uh, amp cabinet on or off and you can switch back and forth between the uh, the fingered as well as the kind of plectrum as they call it or kind of a plucked sound and then there is also an effects page which contains your rotary phaser uh, which you can turn these on and off as well as all of the effects kind of um, settings so let's just go through here uh, the main articulations that you get in this patch are long short mute slides up and hammer offs and they utilize the pink kind of um, key switches down here and then in the green these are kind of a toggle between so whatever your active key switch is so let's say your our longs are uh, are what we have up anytime you hold the green it's going to play those articulations uh, and then immediately go back to the long once you let up so pretty nice because it's not only kind of gives you the uh, the sense of just being able to key switch back and forth but it's also kind of a performable uh, instrument to kind of go for those live type settings. So let's get an idea for the sound here. So it's very unique, kind of uh, almost uh, banjo like, which uh, it is to note that this instrument is tuned in the proper uh, banjo string tuning. So the, the only difference is that they just manipulated the uh, how they layered them here or uh, applied the samples to the uh, key bed so you can play them you know much like a, a keyboard instrument as you can hear here there, there's uh, kind of a nice soft quality Sorry if you can hear my keyboard uh, playing as well in the background. It's not the instrument. Um, okay, so let's uh, just go through the articulation. So those were the longs, and I was utilizing the sustain pedal, which gives it a nice uh, decay. And if you don't use the uh, sustain pedal, there's a faster decay. So it's not a real sustain, if you will. It's just how the sample is uh, tapered off that the... the uh, uh, sustain pedal uses here uh, and so then we go to the shorts and uh, these are pretty nice you can kind of hear the end of the sample there where it's being palmed um, 
these are great for those kind of uh, fast. Kind of short, real kind of uh, grungy stuff, and you can, you know, uh, once you start adding in all the effects, it uh, becomes even more prominent. Prominent, and here we have muted. Oh, excuse me. And that uh, is a very nice sound, uh, as you can hear. And the reverb does add some quality. So uh, to give you kind of an idea of the dry sound here, uh, it's very close and, uh, you know, just a, it sounds like it's in a, a basic, you know, simple room uh, that's been treated. Uh, so we'll just kind of add some reverb back up, which gives it a nice, uh, nice room presence there. All right, and then we'll uh, check out the slide up here. is also very useful and if you uh, are familiar with the low down you know this interface looks very similar and even just some of the articulations are uh, somewhat similar uh, and I believe these were recorded in the same space so these those two instruments would work very well together in any type of uh, you know piece that you are uh, working on uh, and if you haven't checked out that review I did one a few months ago uh, over that library and it's great and this one is doesn't fall short of uh, equally great these are the hammer offs you can kind of do some run type stuff with that if you wanted to to give it a little bit more flavor okay and so that is the hand articulation let's check out the plectrum uh, these have a little bit more of a snap to them especially at the higher velocity. Let's actually go back real quick. So let me switch. Just a little bit more of a snap. So the shorts for this, definitely a lot more prominent. And so you can hear, listen to this particular sample. The They really, because it's being close mic or whatever, you get the, 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 uh, the harmonics that are kind of buzzing in there, which is the character of the instrument. And I really, really like that because it kind of brings out that quality of uh you know something that's organic and something that's real yet this isn't an instrument that we're real familiar with we don't hear in you know popular music or really in anywhere else and so that's why this instrument particularly to me uh is very inspiring to uh to use and this is just the main instrument i mean i'm gonna go through all of them here so you can get an idea of what other uh other stuff they have available, especially the electric tin guitar. Um, and so that was the, that was, yeah, that was the short. Here are the mutes. There's gonna be a lot of C minor today, I apologize. All right, and so then we also have the slides up. are interesting because you get a, the low end you get more of that buzz from the uh, I guess the 10 part of the instrument <laughs> what <laughs> all right then we have uh, the hammer off you know a few round robin on here so you can uh, quite
quite nice. All right, and so that is the kind of basic uh, patch. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go back to the hand and I'm going to go turn the cabinet on here. And this is uh, basically a demonstration of, yeah, with a... Let's actually go back to the lungs. All right. Um... Alright, so that's kind of the cabinet sound there. Uh, let's take a look at the effects. So we have uh, the rotary, which you can kind of adjust the speed here. I personally kind of like in the mid-range. Uh, it's not too fast because it, it gives you kind of the, the body of the stereo field. the echo now that you know this is of course my my favorite part now something that uh i wish might you know come in a later update would be the ability to go from uh tempo syncing these to uh durations versus uh, you know being able to toggle between just free time as well as uh tempo sync uh, so you can adjust then, you know, eighth note, quarter note, whatever. Um. You know, it doesn't take long to kind of just adjust, but just the just the subtle movement of the style because it's there's so much timing difference. You know, that's that's almost like 50 BPM difference right in there so it'd be great to you know fine-tune more onto uh the host sequence or um that you know that's one of my i guess f feature requests that i would like to see in this at some point it'd make the uh, usability even even greater um and then we have the phaser so let's turn that on we'll turn the speed up and depth So that's the basic acoustic 10 guitar. Uh, so we're going to move on through now and uh, check out the next instrument. So this is the acoustic 10 guitar droney. And, uh, you know, this is quite nice because um, they've kind of adjusted the, uh, the attack. Give me a little bit of a, a drone feel. It's rather nice. And again, these will all have the basic articulations. Um, and I'm going to try to go through these rather quickly. Uh, and of course, the effects, they've tweaked these to their liking for these preset patches. All right, the next one here is the low droney. Now, this is they've pitched down. Uh, as you can see here, it's just using the tuning knob down two octaves. And the low end of this is just nice. It's 
That's great. And I could have made another patch, which you could do this yourself, of just going to the regular acoustic tin and tune, tuning it down. You could make almost like a bass acoustic tin guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there uh some of these patches they are on the kind of the loud side which is you know fine so you might have to to watch once you start building up all of the the voices you can uh you can max out there so you know be careful of that excuse me i'm gonna need a glass of water uh, there we go so let's move on here now we have the saturated version this um especially later when we get into some of the those songs that they have bpm down here uh it's pretty cool all right and then we have the saturated uh rotary okay <laughs> sound that's out the cabinet there's a lot more distortion there yeah okay moving on now to the arpeggiator now this is this is something i wish would just be in uh it should it should be in every patch uh that's just me though stuff there and then let's do um, take the swing down <laughs> definitely play with this uh these are you know bpm'd and they give you uh you know just the basic settings which you should be familiar with this with uh, a lot of contact libraries that kind of utilize the basic arpeggiator script um and that's that's one of the things i think i've criticized mod wheel in the past for is just kind of the simplicity behind it um, and the more I've used their products, the more I've actually appreciated that. It's not overly complex scripting. The patches are small, they're easy on resources, and they sound great. They're very unique. So I think, you know, to bash them down on that is kind of a, a is, it's ridiculous because what, what it lacks in all this crazy scripting that a lot of libraries are doing these days, it makes up for just for the fact of how creative it is. Um, and you know a lot of developers aren't doing stuff like this they're doing more traditional things that we hear all the time and they're trying to make it better through scripting innovative yes but you know sometimes you just need that acoustic tin guitar to really get your track to shine okay so here are the song patches so this is the first song patch it's the basic instrument that you get and then they've added these songs up here so <clears throat> excuse me These are all, uh, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. These are all, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. These are all uh, tempo synced as well as uh, pitched. And each pitch is 
there's actually something different here. Now these are great little, you know, cue starters. If they could do, um, again, this would be a lot to ask, obviously, but it would have been interesting to have some minor variations that of each of each one. So like this would be major, and then on like a harder sustain or harder uh, velocity, you get a minor. That way, you could actually play some tunes with those. Uh, but I really think the idea is to kind of just give you an idea of what this instrument sounds like when it's played live and give you the opportunity to try to emulate that with how you play you know kind of it gives you kind of some tools to analyze this instrument aside from just how it's sampled so i thought that was pretty uh pretty unique uh to do and then Sorry, that was a lot of fun. So yeah, the second one is all in uh, G, uh, so you can kind of play along with that uh, and add in, you know, some other uh, elements to it. Uh, but I really like it because it's kind of got that uh, indie movie underscore, uh, you know, sound that I actually really like. Um, those are, those are the types of movies that I, I walk away remembering, you know, the music to it. And, uh, you know, it's one of the interesting features of this library is just how unique it is and how it can work in uh, those types of contexts. All right, so here is, this is great uh, that they did this uh, because I'm a sucker for these types of uh, patches. Uh, um, but it's just uh, glissandis. Uh, I'll spare you on that. Um, but yeah, I, I like that they included these. Uh, all right, so now we're on to the electric 10 guitar. Uh, basically, all I did was add a pickup to this and then run it through uh, amps. And uh, this is the uh, the initial out of the... Let's make sure off. Yeah, out of the box, you know, sound that you get with... Uh, I didn't mention this earlier, uh, but as I've played this instrument a lot, I find myself being down into the kind of the low range. Um, the high range on this instrument, there's, there's 
there's not much sustain and that's because you know higher string instruments in the higher range the strings vibrate so fast that the decay of them is just quick there's not much you can do about that um, without going in and doing some type of uh, time stretching manipulation on the sample um, but I really like the character down in this kind of lower end uh, just because you get more of the sustain something that I don't think uh, of the kind of played uh, you know guitar libraries that I own as well as you know other string kind of solo instruments like this I don't think they really captured that character as much of like those little simple things of a real instrument of just how strings vibrate and work I really do think that how they when they are sampling some people they're just like well that's shorter than those we need to try to get a longer one so they you know go in and play the instrument kind of slightly differently just so they can get the consistencies from the patch i might be wrong but that's how i feel on some of the libraries that i've i've used they don't get that see how that rings and that one really decays a lot quicker slower you know i that's something I really uh, like about this. It just it has a real feel to it. It's uh, it's not a all right. And then uh, the plectrum on this a little bit more of a, a body to it. Get a little bit of that punch sound onto the pickup. Here's some of the mutes. And then we have uh, the slide ups. a question I have because uh, I, I couldn't find it on their website and I should probably ask these guys whether or not they actually recorded the electric like the electric version if that is actually the same guitar as the acoustic one and if they recorded them the same so you actually are getting the same articulation just the different version uh, that might that to me that would make the most sense uh, to just record everything all in one take and then you have consistencies uh they, you know layer in the electric version as well as over you know over the acoustic and you know blend the two and not have a discrepancy between uh between the art, uh, articulation samples all right and then we have the hammer offs all right i'm going to go back to the hand patch to give you an idea of the uh the toggles here so we're going to be setting lungs and then, so, if I hold down this A, um, if you don't see down here, um, if I hold this down, and that was the other thing I noticed too, when you, there's, uh, if you hit them while you're holding the sustain down, it kind of adds in a little filter effect, a little swell there, and then it mutes it, so it kind of like blends between the two articulations.
it's just a simple toggle between it's not nothing too complex there um and then the effects is we've now added the amplifier and a drive and then everything else is the same so let's hear it with the rotary a little bit of uh Playing today is very odd. All right, so uh, there's that. We have phaser. Now let's add the drive. So there you go. That's the electric tin uh, clean version. And so they've added in these, the, 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 the same basic uh, concepts from the other one. Again, I'm gonna kind of rush through these to give you an idea. So the attack can... Mess with that. And we have a dirty. <laughs> you can play with that there. And then we have uh, the tin guitar filthy. These are kind of more of a. Uh... Filthy deep. All right, and then uh, also notice as a couple of those were uh, pitched down an octave. Sit there and we have the phaser. percussion tin hits. So the thing that, uh, to note about the electric tin guitar is that there isn't an arpeggiator uh, attached to it, which I think should definitely be in an update uh, uh, personally. 
And this one actually comes up with the uh, move in and out, turn the swing down, just turn on. These are basically just uh, percussion hits. Uh, let's turn that back off. Some flams. Some of those are pitched, uh, it looks like, or you know, stretched. Uh, and you get the basic uh, stuff you need there. So, yeah, it turns it on and off. So you can actually uh, MIDI learn that. more okay and then let's move on here we have the perk brushes loops up tempo hits. for quite a while there. All right, then we have perk hits and dinks. Some of these sound like they've been pitched down. And so then we have, uh, oh, that was the electric. That was all through the uh, um, pickup. And then this one, what do we have here? Dink's computer. Oh, okay, a computer one. Just kind of adds in a little filter uh, effect there. Tune down. with also the same mod wheel effect. <laughs> same thing. All right, and then here we go. This is the Harrington 1200 mod wheel. Tenthesizer. <laughs> uh, I love puns. <laughs> So yeah, very nice, uh, nice basic patch here. And then we have. from basically being uh, long to short. Um, pretty nice. And then we have the deeper. And these are all 
all source sounds from the original instrument that they've manipulated. The, the mod wheel. Nice effect there. And again, you get the arpeggiator and then the, uh, the basic effects control there. And then we have the Rin Tin Tin Arp 2000. Let's turn that on. Let's see what this does. That goes off. Let's turn the phaser off. So there's that, and then that's, I believe, it. Yeah, so there you go. This is the, again, uh, the Biscuitin Guitar by Mod Wheel. Uh, it's $49. It's very light on your resources. I think the total size, un, un, you know, once you take it out of the RAR and turn it into an instrument folder, is around 621 megabytes. Um, and that's what it's showing up for my system. It's just shy again of uh, uh, it's around 2,900 samples, uh, which is which is great. Um, so yeah, check it out again at www.modwheel.co.nz. Check out their demos, which are really cool. Uh, and yeah, I will see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.